Boa tarde a todos. Meu nome é André Gomes, uh, portanto, responsável e fundador pelo Elite Performance Football. Um, apresentando um bocadinho o projeto para quem não nos conhece, uh, portanto, é um projeto que visa, visa reunir uh, os melhores performances do nosso, do, nosso, do nosso jogo e uh, que os mesmos possam passar também a, seu, a sua expertise, o seu know-how e partilhá-los com todos os, todos os que nos veem, todos os que nos seguem. Uh, para que todos nós, nesta fase e, e, e portanto, a partir, a partir, de, de, a partir também do, do momento em que o projeto se iniciou, uh, que toda a gente uh, se consiga desenvolver, questionar, uh, para que todos nós consigamos ter cada vez mais uh, ferramentas naquilo que, é o nosso, naquilo que é o nosso trabalho, outros aquilo que é, que é, o, seu, que é o seu hobby, que é o futebol, e, e esperamos que todos vocês uh, aproveitem estes, estes momentos para... para para continuarem a crescer e para continuarem a questionar-se e também uh, com, a, com a questão, com, os, com as questões que vão lançando e com tudo, todas as dinâmicas que nós vamos criando aqui, todos nós possamos ser cada vez melhores, esse, esse é o nosso objetivo. Um, my name is André Gomes, I'm the, the, the founder of, of Elite Performance Football. Uh, Elite Performance Football, for those who don't know what it is, uh, it's a project based in, um, in the, the Exceed, the... Um, and together all the all the best performers in our game um, to make sure that everyone that follow us and that are present in this these events uh, can develop and um, question themselves question what they are doing uh, and improve and develop their skills their abilities and at the same time be better persons and better football coaches that's our aim and that's uh, we do what we do um, thank you for everyone that's that's um, are present for trusting in, in the project, for trusting in us. Um, and uh, today we'll have uh, Peter. Peter uh, is the, the national under 15 um, head coach of uh, Holland uh, National Association. He's at the same time the, um, the, um, the assisting coach of the under 20. Uh, he will be here with us today to explain uh, with detail what is um, what is the is uh, at the same time his experience and at the same time uh, what makes the Holland and the Dutch football uh, one of the, the best in the in the in the world. Hoje teremos a presença do, do Peter Bert, selecionador sub-15 holandês, também adjunto da seleção, neste caso a equipa sub-20 da Holanda. Vai explicar passo a passo aquilo que tem sido a sua experiência e ao mesmo tempo também uh, para nos, nos faça entender quais os pormenores e o porquê do futebol holandês continuar a ser uh, um dos melhores do mundo. Okay. Hello, Android. Hello, Peter. Yes, welcome. Uh, okay. We're not seeing you. Okay. You want me to start, uh, André? Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm first, I'm first gonna try to share my uh, screen. Uh, let me see. It's uh, it's online. It's in. Uh, yes, it is. It is. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, um, for uh, Elite Performance Football. Thank you for having me. Um, my biggest challenge today will be uh, that my uh, my um, translate problems, but it will be fine. I think it's strange to uh, present online because um, I cannot see everybody and. I mostly want to, to have a feeling with my uh, with everybody. Um, uh, therefore, I tried to integrate some um, some more videos to get a bit more varied. Um, but you can also help me to ask some questions. So, Andre already said um, after every 
uh, subject, uh, you uh, you can ask some some questions, and I yeah. uh, I I think um, together we can make them a little bit more dynamic, and um, I I think it will help us to uh, to get uh, some better results. So yes. let me just translate that, Peter, to Portuguese. Uh, Peter estava a dizer tal qual como na, na, aconteceu na parte final da última formação, nesta formação, por cada, por cada secção que, que o Peter vá, vá terminando de, de falar, teremos uh, espaço para perguntas. Podem-nos fazer diretamente uh, ao Peter, ou seja, é só colocar no chat que pretendem fazer uma, uma questão. Eu liberto o vosso áudio e vocês fazem questão diretamente em inglês ao Peter. Se não conseguirem fazer em inglês, podem um, inserir no chat a pergunta em português que eu faço a tradução para, para o Peter. Um, as I was saying, and Peter was saying as well, uh, to create here a good dynamic, um, after each subject that Peter uh, uh, finished to talk about, uh, we have uh, a space to, to open questions. Uh, if, if you want to do the question in English, just uh, write it down on the chat that you want to do a, a question. And then I uh, will release your microphone for you to ask the question to Peter. If um, the, if someone doesn't want to 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 ask it in English, uh, in Portuguese because it's my mother tongue, uh, you can write it down on the on the chat, and then I will translate to Peter. Okay, sorry, Peter. Uh, thank you, thank you. Just uh, just tell me if you want to uh, translate uh, something. No, it's okay. Okay. Um... A little bit uh, about the content uh, today. I'm trying to uh, introduce uh, myself, talk a little bit about Holland, about the country, some history of some uh, coaches, which I think uh, we are uh, very known uh, on. And um, after that, I try to tell something of my, our philosophy at the Dutch, Dutch uh, Football Association. And um, I think plenty of time for some um, questions and uh, answers after that. Um, nah, something about Holland. Um, I think we're very uh, privileged uh, people uh, to live in a country like, like Holland. Uh, everything is so well, uh, well organized. Um, so a little, a, a little introduction for me. Um, I'm married, I have a wife and two children, um, some um, history of, of my diplomas. So I was, uh, I was a, a sports teacher on the, on the sports school. I, uh, I graduated uh, by myself and uh, after that I chose to um, start to work full time in um, in uh, in football and uh, i get that chances and i i took that chances and i try to uh, um, de develop myself uh, more and uh, till now uh, i think it's uh, going uh, going fine um some inspiration maybe i led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength, that my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I work for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. Uh, I think it's a pretty good mo motivational uh, uh, video. Uh, a good clip of Michael Jordan um, I wanted to share with you I think a lot of uh, listeners already saw that clip uh, that, that's no problem but it's the message I just want want you to give so um, in my um, in my whole career 
um, I had to fight for my chances and I have to work very hard for my chances. And, and that's a big message to all, I think. Just go for your chances and don't think they just um, um, come, come by. But um, just just go for them. Create your own chances by working hard to listen to webinars, uh, to talk with uh, uh, specialists, uh, to everybody. So that clip uh, was a big um, inspiration for me. So a little bit of my uh, player career. In my uh, youth, I um, was playing for uh, PSV Eindhoven, one of the biggest clubs. Uh, a lot of injuries, so uh, um, I had to leave uh, P PSV and at uh, FC Nambos I was uh, a pro soccer player. Um, I think um, <laughs> not really that much um, matches, um, different reasons, but at the end I was not good enough as a, as a soccer player. So at, um, on the highest amateur level, I think that was uh, was a good uh, level for me, and that was uh, uh, the uh, the clubs after my uh, pro soccer uh, 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 career. Um, so after my uh, career, I uh, worked some in the fitness. I was teacher at the Dutch uh, Fo Football Association uh, at that time, and um, and uh, I already told you about. Uh, uh, being teacher on the sports academy, I graduated uh, by myself. So uh, for a very long time, I think oh, it's in here, 70 years, uh, I already uh, be uh, be a trainer coach. First uh, amateur level, after that um, to uh, some youth academies like uh, Willem II, Sparta, at, um, at Sparta, I already also assisted the first team. Um, and um, and uh, after that, I get a big chance at, uh, at Feyenoord Rotterdam, a big club in Holland, to be the coordinator from uh, U13 still uh, U16s. And uh, last year, uh, they asked me for the Dutch Football uh, Association. So, big chance for me to work with the, the best players uh, they are in, in that age. So, um, yeah, it was a big chance to, uh, uh, and a new dynamic. And I thought after three years uh, at final, it's a great chance. Um, I'm assisting you 20, 20s and um, I'm leading you 15. Next to that, I'm also uh, uh, graduating uh, level four as a teacher uh, for the Dutch Football Association. So uh, nowadays I also um, teach uh, the UEFA A in Holland. So uh, that's also uh, what I'm doing right now. So uh, I think, um, and, and, and um, uh, Andre also uh, told a little bit about that. Um, search for the best version of yourself. And, and that's what I do uh, every day, searching for my best version. And um, I have to develop myself on different kinds of ways, but I do that every day and I'm just searching for that. Um, and my biggest goal of that is uh, to work in the professional football as a, as a head coach. Um, I try to reach that nationally uh, and also Otherwise, if it's uh, not uh, realistic or whatever, then uh, maybe um, sometimes I uh, go abroad to uh, spread my wings and see uh, some other visions. Uh, some, um, some strengths and weaknesses, and I, I always think wherever you have too much can be or become a weakness. So I'm a very critical uh, sometimes if I'm... Uh, uh, um, if it's too much, it's become too demanding. Passionate can be to be obsessed, etc. So um, um, I, I think that's a little bit of me. And um, some opportunities uh, is uh, to get my UEFA Pro. Um, I want to do that in a few years, and uh, and uh, I want to uh, graduate uh, the Master of Coaching at uh, Johan Cruyff. Um, academy. So um, 
I, I, uh, for Andre, I think no, no uh, questions uh, so far. Andre. Yep. I. Yep. No well, question now. Yeah. No questions. So uh, uh, we can keep moving forward. No problem. Yes. So I want to show you a short uh, introduction um, with some Dutch elements in it. Um, we are a very small country, you will see it, with a strong uh, infrastructure, um, multicultural, and um, I think a strong uh, uh, democracy. <laughs> So a few things in it, uh, I think uh, these days 70 million in, uh, uh, in a small country. Um, I think that's, that's uh, the positive on it is uh, it's, it's, we have to communicate uh, clearly and quick. Uh, we got um, uh, good healthcare, education, life expectation. Because I don't want you or my class or anyone else from this room. Um, um, the most important thing, I think, we are uh, we got a um, um, a strong democracy, and we are very uh, innovative people. So. Uh, we are not easily uh, satisfied and we grumble to, um, um, yeah, to, uh, to show ourselves, to improve ourselves, to, I think that's, that's uh, the Dutch people, uh, that's who we are. Um, if, if we look to, this, to the Dutch football, um, there's a big gap in, in the financial uh, budget. So, in the, in, the, in the biggest countries, there, there are a lot of uh, money to uh, buy players, etc. So for young players, there are no, no big chances. And in our competition, uh, because of the, the money, the less money, the competition level is lower, but also the average age is also lower. So a lot of chances for young players in the last years, um, there, there were a lot of young players, really young players, for example, at Ajax, who, who already played as a, as a, um, as a youth player in the first team, like uh, um, Matthijs de Ligt or, or Frank de Jong. In the big competition, that will never um, going to happen. So I think that's, um, yeah, that, that's about the Dutch competition. And um, if we play... Um, uh, European, uh, we got a problem because we don't have that experience and we don't have that physical um, uh, abilities to uh, play that game. So in the Dutch competition, we got um, young, not experienced, uh, but good, good potential players who can develop themselves. And uh, I think that's the Dutch competition nowadays um, yeah and you see for example uh, uh, at Ajax last year when they got some experienced players like Tadic and uh, Blind um, the young players uh, can uh, develop better and also in Europe uh, the good play the, the, the good football we play uh, with some experienced players around um, yeah, we can show them ourselves also in, uh, in the European League. So I think, um, yeah, um, um, Ajax has got the money for 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 uh, for those uh, experienced players. So I think that's uh, that's one of uh, the good things about Ajax on this moment. But that the whole thing is good for the 
Dutch competition where we have a lower average age and uh, we're young. So a little video again, uh, which you see who we are. And I'm gonna explain later on a little about that. Um, because the Dutch team is also called Orange, uh, which refers to the Dutch royal family Oranje Nassau. Um, and um, we're different. We're different guys. And um, yeah, we're a different country. Wie wij zijn wordt niet bepaald door één kleur. Maar door wat we doen als die kleur over onze schouders gaat. Eén kleur, verschillende generaties. Voor we houden aan één kleur bewonder toveel. Deze kleur staat je niet. Het vormt je. Omdat het meer is dan een shirt, een vlag. Dit is de kleur die kiest voor de toekomst. Als anderen op zeker spelen. De kleur die kiest voor creativiteit en het anders doen. Wij kiezen voor de pupil en schrijf je daar geschiedenis mee. Dat is de manier waarop wij het doen en altijd hebben gedaan. Want wij zijn niet enorm groot, maar onmiskenbaar eigen. Dus mocht je je nog afvragen wat dit is, wie wij zijn. Oranje, dat zijn wij. Oké, okay, in de club was Dutch. Um, I think it's, it's not there in English, so... A little bit explain. It's about one color, and we got some different generations. Uh, so we see in 74, 78, we're uh, a second place on the world champions, uh, but also in 88. And, and uh, last year, uh, with the second place on the Nation, Nations League. So uh, what we do is not about the color, but it, it shapes us uh, when you uh, play in that color. So... I think we always choose uh, for the future, for creativity. For we, we try to do it otherwise. I'm gonna explain it later on, and um, we try to do that customized. And um, we don't want to do it safely. We want to do it uh, otherwise. So we all, always did, and um, 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 uh, that was told in um, in the video. Some facts, um, yeah, just to, to look at. I already told you about the second place, the first place in the, in the Nations League. So, um, um, yeah, that, that's some facts. Uh, so, uh, I think interesting, some, uh, some big coaches, the greatest uh, coaches of Dutch football. But um, they're all different, I think. So, uh, they are strong in his own ways. So uh, we got Rinus Michels, uh, one of the biggest coaches ever, I think, who introduced the total football. And um, um, he's called the general. And all, he also said uh, football was a war. Um, he, he wants to play total football and with a lot of changing in positions and, and etc. So. Uh, on a later moment, Louis Vergaal uh, was a total different coach, but strong in his own way. So he introduced the, the total human principles. Uh, and he said um, um, not only the football, but also the, 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 the man behind the player is important. The, the wife, his family, if he's feeling great, uh, um, he will play better in, in, in the game. So we got a difficult, uh, different type of coaches. So I think the Dutch football is not one way. We do it not one way, but we are strong in whatever we want to do. So these coaches uh, are uh, some big examples for me also, but um, they are strong in what they are. They are strong in what they want. And I think that uh, that will be um, uh, the, the biggest me uh, message, I think. So you see who's hitting. He's a people manager. He uh, puts an arm around uh, his players, uh, around the shoulder, and he's the father of the team. But uh, Dick Advocat, he's uh, the little general, and uh, he's loving an iron uh, discipline. Um, and he's a very good coach. Uh, uh, crisis manager so 
um, difficult uh, qualities, but strong on their own way. Maybe, um, um, maybe Andre, some, somebody wants to ask some questions about the yep. coaches or about the video or... Yeah, we have here some a question from Philippe, but we will talk about it um, further mm -hmm. in, the, in the presentation. Ok, Filipe? Okay. Filipe, vamos falar sobre este tema um pouco mais à frente, vamos deixar para depois. Uh, existe alguém que queira colocar alguma questão ao Peter? Anyone that would like to, to ask a question uh, to Peter about the subjects that were, uh, that he talked about? No, oh, it's okay. Okay, so okay. let's move on, Peter. Okay, yes, thank you. And Please try to make it dynamical. So if you want to say something or ask something, just just drop in. And I just I mentioned something about Holland and about the Dutch football, about the history, and we we um, we work to the philosophy of Holland, uh, our our teams and uh, and of me. So uh, that's um, about the next video. Um, it's about missing the. European uh, Championship in uh, 2016 and the World Cup in 2018. It's called the Wave. So sometimes we don't don't have that much uh, talents, but we're not uh, afraid. They will always come. We are strong in our uh, youth academies. We are strong in development. We are strong as 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 the coaches. We are strong as the Dutch association. So we believe. And with a wave and the new generation that there is now. Off to every wave. There is a moment of silence. At this moment, you don't know when, you don't know how, but you know it's coming. The next wave is coming. I know you love our waves. Well, Hope you'll love our new wave as well. Our waves are special, confident, stubborn, inspiring. Loved by many, hated by some. Creating dreams, washing away dreams. Floated on the hope of a nation, swimming in desire. Every wave is unique, but with the same dream. Different dreamers, same dream. Different dreamers, same dream. Different dreamers, same dream. We know people made a lot of noise about us. How we walk, how we talk, how we dress, how we splash. We heard you. That's okay. We just want to make more noise. We want to make them take off their hat. We want to create our waves. Different dreamers, same dream. You don't know when. You don't know how. But you know. It's coming. The new way is coming. Peter, uh, sorry to, to, to interrupt this. Uh, we have some questions from, okay. with a bit delay. Sorry about that. No problem. Um, we have here a question from Fabio. Fabio is asking, uh, what is your biggest influence uh, as, a, as a football coach? Whew. Um, the biggest influence as a football coach, as a youth football coach, because that's my experience. Um, so I, I really believe that uh, all the players, um, and I think I'm talking about uh, it a little bit later also, but every player, you, uh, we try to uh, um, get the best out of him and, and get him the best out out of himself so we try to help the players to uh, develop themselves to get a better human but also a better soccer player um, which makes chance to get a pro soccer player and maybe in the national team so i think our influence um, on that moment uh, our influence on that team for that players is very big because 
Yeah, if, if you see, they are, they are training for four or five or six times a week. And um, um, you're a, a little uh, kind of example for them. So we, we try to, to uh, let them find the best um, version of, six, of themselves on that moment. So I think it's a big influence. Is that a question um, for now? Or yeah, is uh, there's a, a couple, more, two more questions. One from yeah. uh, Michal. Thank Michal you is, is uh, asking, um, what is the impact of, the, of Raymond Verayen uh, into Dutch football? I don't know if I'm spelling no. right yeah. the, the, the name, but. Yeah, a big influence. Um, I think, I think I think um, a long time ago already, uh, he wrote some books about uh, football injuries, and he uh, um, he and that subject uh, uh, was 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 not uh, that uh, known at uh, with the soccer coaches. So he's he's writing a book about period periodization about periodization of your team and about every player. So uh, that makes that a lot of coaches and also in all the courses, um, his, um, uh, are using his philosophy. Uh, on this moment, I think there are different kind of philosophies, um, but the big base is coming from Raymond Verheyen. So he is a big influencer for uh, Dutch football and uh, we're very happy with that, yes. Okay, so uh, we have another question from, uh, this is from uh, Luis. Um, Thank you. Luis, uh, Luis is asking, um, in terms of, um, of the, 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 the main core of training in Holland, uh, what is, if there is uh, an influence from Orstwein? From what? Orstwein. Orstwein, he worked in uh, in uh, Bar with Barcelona, um, yeah. so uh, it's a uh, is uh, specialized in the um, in the progress from the youth to 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 the last the last um, group of ages before the before the the first teams or the seniors. Uh, so Luis is asking if uh, Orstwein uh, have uh, any kind of influence in in Holland in terms of uh, of training. I I I I think you you pronounce the name uh, not good. <laughs> Oostwein. Uh, yeah, Oostwein, with W E I N. W E. <laughs> uh, I I I think, um, and 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 we got a lot of coaches. Um, He's German, are... by the way. Thank you, Matthias. He's oh, German. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so th it doesn't matter. Thank you for the question. Uh, um, but but uh, I think we got a uh, because our um, we got a, uh, um, uh, a lot of coaches who are strong by their vision and they are strong who they are and they believe in themselves and they're uh, big influencers uh, at that part. We got a, a lot of dead coaches, and I think. Uh, that's the strong thing about Holland. So if you um, if you see uh, these coaches uh, again, those are also all different, and they are big influencers. So on on every type of level, we got persons, we got football coaches who are uh, strong in their vision. So um, I think all the Dutch. But also the 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 the, the, uh, the coaches from other countries who are strong in their vision, we um, we try to keep the best out of it, so it can make us also stronger. So I think we got a lot of uh, big influencers uh, at that part. Uh, okay, so uh, we have here a couple more questions, but yeah, yeah. Uh, they are based in the, in the technical uh, technical uh, issues that we will 
that you will discuss um, further. So yeah. probably if you want to, to, to talk about them right now for the, or to, to answer the questions or leave it for the, for the next subjects. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to explain a lot, of, a lot about uh, the philosophy. So yeah, uh, so probably you will, you will um, uh, answer, answer these, these questions. Yes, and I think, I think okay. it, will, it will be great if you, um, if there's a subject uh, and you see a question, just uh, come yep. in and, um, and ask that question. Is that uh, okay? Yeah, perfect. Okay, about the philosophy, I want to um, uh, talk about some policy of the Dutch National Association, um, about the starting point, something about the program. Um, I want to uh, show you some video about uh, the playing style and about some guidance of, uh, of players and staff, but um, especially for the players. Um, I think uh, in our policy, I think the, the upper one, the win versus development, that's uh, uh, that will be an interesting issue because uh, international games, we want to win. But at the same time, we know, um, especially with the youth players, um, uh, it's, it's not about now, it's about the future. It's, it's, it's in, they have to uh, um, reach the national team. That's our policy. We try to uh, get a lot of players to the next a team and so bring them to the national team so we always create create a good surroundings um, for the players that they can give the best they got uh, but at the same time we as the coaches we try to keep the long term in mind so development and that moment also is is an is, is an important thing so i think Yes, we want to win that games, but if you see the the role of the coaches next to the pitch or the how we work with players, I'll talk uh, about that also later. Um, it's all about development. So we create a winning surroundings, but our, as a coaches, we're acting like development. And uh, a strong part of the Dutch uh, association is um, we got full-time coaches and um, um, we're assisting each other. So we're helping each other where we got meetings every week. Uh, we got still meetings every week now uh, online, but uh, normally also in Zeist and, and every coach is there uh, two days um, and um, working together, um, uh, discuss about subjects, etc. cetera. Um, and what we try to do as full-time coaches, we try to cope, cooperate with, with the club. So uh, every coach um, uh, also got time to go to the clubs and, and just walk with the clubs for a few days with that, um, with that age you working with, uh, to know the coaches, to know the people, to know the players, to see where are the, uh, the, the, the special qualities of the players, etc. So we've got a very good cooperation with the clubs. Um, we tr try to have a logical selection policy. So um, that, that makes that we want to bring a big, uh, uh, number of players to the next age, but yeah, sometimes um, also um, you see that um, the player is not good enough anymore, or they don't want to work, or they make some faults uh, around the pitch, etc. So uh, there are always uh, space for for uh, for new players. I was searching for. Uh, I just mentioned you. Uh, that already uh, for the ind individual quality. So we're not searching for complete players, but we search for individual qualities and we try to bring that together. And uh, I'm going to tell you uh, about if we, um, if I show you uh, a video about uh, my team. Um, 
So uh, I believe, we believe, let me see, that, that uh, for which organization you're gonna work, um, there's always a mission, a vision or targets to, uh, to achieve some core values or identity, how plays, uh, teams uh, have to play. So that will be always the starting point. And the starting point for uh, the national teams of Holland are, uh, we also got a mission and vision and we got some targets, et cetera, but clear for us are the core values. There are some core values. I'm, I'm not gonna spread that. I'm not gonna show that, uh, but, we got nine big values we have to uh, uh, work with the players. So at the 15th, um, uh, we chose three of them. And, um, um, and, and, and that was also a, a starting point for me with my players. So we had three uh, uh core values uh team winning and proud um so that that makes that uh i i i um i asked my players okay what does it mean for you just write it down and and tell it to me so at that time they were they were um creating their own uh, surroundings and they um um we didn't any um used agreements or rules or whatever no they thought they thought about the, those core values and those core values they uh spoke with each other about okay what is important if you um if you uh think about that core value so uh, i was starting with a new team i didn't knew my players that much and we brought them together no rules no agreements but we told them okay three core values of holland uh, we got more but in the u15 only these three are important for now and um we visualized that um their own agreements their own uh things they they talked about in a drawing in a poster and we used that in every situation so for the U15, this drawing is our starting point. And um, we don't have to work to a European Cup or a World Cup or whatever qualification. The U15 only plays um, a tournament and some uh, test match, uh, matches, um, friendlies, friendly matches. But um, if we come together and let's zoom to, um, if you see left on the, on the drawing, the team uh, in Dutch, they told, okay, if we think about team, we have to help each other. We have to have fun. We have to have a good performance and we want to um, um, uh, tell each other if, uh does something wrong or whatever or we, we want to uh be critical on each other and that's what those they they speak so in spain was our first tournament and um um on that tournament okay things happens or also things were not planned or not good or whatever and every time we get this drawing okay you talk, we bring the acting. So, that's for us. Maybe, maybe questions now, uh, Andre? Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, we have here a lot of questions. Thank you, everyone. Temos aqui muitas perguntas. Obrigado a todos. Um, uh, we have your questions, but does doesn't regard the 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 philosophy and the core values that you were talking about. The questions that we have, we can we can answer that uh, further. 
I think, uh, Andre, uh, the connection is not that good, I think. Yeah, just a second. Are you, are you listening to me right now? Just, just tell me if... Uh, Uh, um, we we made a program so we can uh, assist each other. So um, that means you 15, 16, and 17, uh, but next year only you 15, 16 are not playing in that window. Um, we're working for very short processes um, and um, yeah, uh, we want to create um the qualifications and the european and and, and, and the world cups the those tournaments they are very important for us so we create tournaments with u15 u16 uh, in spain uh, and we um, arrange that in, in in spain and portugal also in portugal um for the experience and for the to influence the players to get get a big experience nationally uh, internationally so with the best against the best players of europe um uh, and, and international games um uh, are very uh, high speed high intensity and play against different cultures and playing styles and um we believe that those experiences are very important for uh, for the players um, later on their um, uh, career. Um, so between those tournaments or uh, friendly games or qualification games, we got selection days also. Two days uh, in Zeiss to work to each other, with uh, train with each other, to discuss about core values, to um, uh, have some other sessions, etc. So, um, um, those are slow. And uh, I think one big part of us is also we don't select quickly. So, um, uh, a few years ago, we all uh, we started to play international games with U14. Now we do. We start with U15 and also in the second uh, half of the season. So we try to um, um, uh, uh, start later on in the age of the youth players with playing international games. And that's all about the biological uh, age of the, um, uh, of the player. So we believe we cannot predict which players are the the, the the most potential players in um, in the U four, uh, U14s and hardly in the U15s. Um, why do you start with the U15s? We want to give them the experience from being on a national team. So in the U14, U15, yes, we come together. We do a lot of selection days, selection games, selection training sessions to uh, see, okay, to players, to bring them to see, okay, who are really the, the uh, potentials and um, to have some um, uh, da data. So we test them on that, on that day, uh, on that selection days. Is there, and we use that later on in the, uh, in the so uh, uh, next thing you see futures. We got a national team, and we also got a. So I'm coach of the national U15s, but I'm also coach of the future team U15s. Will be the very talented players who are the little ones, the the ones who are not that physical um, on that moment. So,
uh, you see if you get all the pitch of all those years, the national team and the future teams, um, um, there are um, uh, the same numbers who reach the Dutch national team. So that that means um, uh, and uh, Peter, are you are you listening to me? Um, that means our vision uh, in Dutch national team. Yes. Yeah, we are we are not uh, seeing you, your video. Probably there's a problem in connection. In in your in your in your connection, your yeah. internet connection. Yeah. Okay. Is it is it okay right now? Uh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's okay. It's okay. Let me just. Okay. So our students, the national also players who are not in the U15 and um, are coming to the Dutch team. So our vision about U15 starting with international uh, have a future team till U18. That fish is, I think, uh, uh, that, and I, I think maybe there are some questions about. We are not hearing you well, Peter. We are hearing you with uh, a lot of I, a lot of uh, stoppage. To, uh, yeah. Another connection. Let me see. If, if, Andre, yes, yeah, I try to uh, use this connection now. You hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, um, are there questions about the future uh, future team or about the the selection about the Dutch national teams or whatever? Oh, let me see here. Um... Otherwise, I just should go on and we, have, we, do it we have here a question, a question from Adam about the core values. It come a little later. This this uh, okay. This uh, this this question uh, is asking: uh, Do the personal core values match to the Dutch association, or you have to adapt uh, yours or the team to the Dutch association ones? Now. Um, um, Okay, the, the core values are from the Dutch association, but um, we are free to bring something from ourselves in. So um, those three core values um, we have to use in the U15s. That's, that's written down, that's, that's uh, part of the vision. Uh, but if I want to, uh, I believe, uh, fun having fun together is is important so if i want to bring that in it's fine so i can bring my um my own uh, uh vision also in um in that okay uh we have uh, here a question from tomas um Thomas is talk is asking about the game model, but uh, we will have we will discuss that later. Yes. So uh, we will leave this question for for later as well. We already we already have a lot of questions for later, based on uh, tech, the technical side of of the of the game. So uh, we will we will uh, answer that uh, later. Okay. 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 Perfect. Thank you. So. Um, with the playing style to to start uh, to go on, uh, to uh, 
uh, to the games, the way we want to play, we believe, okay, there, there, we have to some structure and uh, we integrate some principles in it. So um, we have some, um, um, uh, a team organization, we want to play one, four, three, three, uh, with a attacking midfielder and two defensive ones. Um, and we try to build up from the back with, uh, with three players. I'm going to explain that. And there are some principles. And those principles, uh, we want to force the opponent to make choices. And we want to uh, have the, the right um, distances between players. And we want to um, uh, make the actions uh, forward those kind of things. So we want to um, integrate that. And uh, a big question, there's, there's no answer right now, but what, what is your vision on that? What's your structure? Or do you work from principles and, um, and you bring some structure in it? Or are you very structured and try to bring some principles in and, and, uh, and somewhere between it? So I think you have to create a vision about that, how you want to, uh, how you want to play. Um, so what, what I'm going to do is um, uh, from the starting points, the core values who is, is uh, above all, uh, we create a starting point, the game, and we're going to search for some uh, reasons to simplify. So if we're gonna train, um, uh, we're gonna do a session. Um, we try to, um, okay, what makes that sessions? And uh, that's what I wanna tell you about how we want to do that, uh, how we do that at, um, at the national teams. And, um, and that's all about, do we want to train in the context or just go out of it and that's what i'm gonna want to do I, I'll, I'll do that uh, with the u15 so i was working with them in uh, spain we played a little tournament uh, and you see uh, with the big uh, a picture uh, right down we won uh, we beat uh, czech four to one ireland two to one and spain six to one i think and uh, it was a great tournament. And um, the structure we gave them, okay, uh, we play 4-3-3. Three, three. It's a little bit typical Dutch, 4-3-3. Three, three. But um, 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 the interpretation is um, what, what's the opponent going to do? So I want to give an example. Um, if the opponent... Uh, for example, playing with a defensive midfielder. Um, what are we gonna do? Uh, they play high pressure, so we're gonna build up uh, with three. We want only one player on the sides of the field, and we want to our wingers between the lines. So we force them with this kind of playing uh, in in choices. So another example, if they draw back a little uh, again 4-3-3 three, three, but on the moment if they play like that okay we're gonna change so that makes one midfielder drop back uh, our attacking midfielder drop back um, our wingers are playing inside so the midfielder of the opponents have to choose are we going with them on or not the the wingers are gonna choose are we gonna uh, with them defense backwards with the um, outside defenders, or are we going up front? And that's what we want. We want to force the opponent in choices. And and I'm gonna ex uh, I'm gonna try to show that in a video. <laughs> So if you see um, the right one is our left midfielder. So he dropped back 
Um, and and you also see, um, I think, two midfielders in there. So on that mark, we try to build from the back. That's also a little bit Dutch, a little bit rush, uh, risk. But mostly we try to build it from the back. But you see, but you see, with high pressure of the Czech uh, team, we're easily around midline to pass up front. And you see, um, a lot of players want to attack the uh, space behind their last line. Um, but with easily um, uh, to force them into choices to. Let them hesitate. Um, um, we create this situation. I think the next uh, part. Okay, we win the ball. You see. Okay, they they try to play high pressure. We again, and you see our left midfielder right now. Um, it's it's the third man uh, who comes in into the and and, and this this is uh, this midfielder is. Hesitating, what do I have to do? He's looking around. Do I have to go with him or not? And you, you see the next also, the next player also. He's, is he's going to, uh, or not? And this is, this, this is really what we want. We want to force them in choices. So that makes if the, play, the, the opponent's playing otherwise, on a different way, we have to change also because we want to force them in choices and we want to do that because we want to act forward. So we take some risks with building up from the back, but we're not uh, staying at the back all the time. As soon as possible, we want to go forward. So you see it right now, uh, this player has to pass it to the right outside D, but he didn't. So we're again, uh, in, uh, building up from the back. So, in this moment, this player is free with high pressure and he can pass. Uh, he chooses another pass, but he can charge uh, up front. Uh, again, our left, left midfielder uh, drop back. And this midfielder is interesting because we want, uh, with two passes, um, we, we, uh, we have him free. Uh, around midline, so you see three building up from the back, and we uh, we see this part later on in the exercise in the in the session. Um, uh, we want to use one of the strikers to uh, uh, make him free, and you see one of the goals. I think this is the two nil is coming from this building up from the back. So we force him in choices to pass and act forwardly. This is the last uh, um, thing, and this is, I think, the one nil, is it? I think, um, just because it's a nice goal, strike of Ajax. Uh, but again, we started with three at the back. So, what do we do on the session? And um, I try to um, bring you in our mind, in our vision. So if we, want, if we prepare a session, we start at the end. So um, we start not with a big scrimmage, but if we prepare the session, we first think, okay, what are we going to do uh, at the end of the session? Now, at the end of the session, I think everybody is going to play scrimmages. So we also did... In this part, I think 11 v 11, because we at the national team, we got 22 players in a, in a session, but you also can play 9 v 9. So Peter, again, our left Peter, midfielder, uh, okay. we okay. trained that in the session, uh, comes free and easily uh, with high pressure, we can pass uh, forward. Uh, uh, searching for these passes between the lines and um, um, uh, to act forwardly, and to uh, um, again, a third building up from the back in this. Peter, if you can, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. If you can take uh, mute mute the videos, uh, yeah. 
because we are hearing you uh, and then at the same time we are hearing the the sound of the videos and it's sometimes it's difficult to ah. to, to understand okay? okay sorry to interrupt you okay no, thank you no, no no it's fine so i'm gonna explain a little uh, again um so we try to build up with three to uh, have two principles uh, to force the opponent in choices to bring them in choices but we want to act um, uh, uh, forward uh, as soon as possible. So in this situation, I bring it a little bit back. Oh. You see the left uh midfielder draw back uh, they have to force because the right wing is giving pressure so that makes easily our left uh, midfielder is is uh, totally free <laughs> on that moment we can make choices uh, one of the wing players is between the lines uh, but we want him to act forward because they want to play high pressure, so the spaces, the time and the space are on the other uh, half of the pitch. So we want to um, go to that space. So um, that was on the uh, on the session the end uh, of that session and uh, before that session we're searching for positional games for uh, scrimmages with lower numbers to um, to get uh, more situations like two against two more situation with um, uh, passing between the lines so this is an example we did on this session uh, for preparing the game against Czech. So you see a positional game. Uh, we, we see three uh, against two and they try to beat them. And if, if they uh, did, they have to act. They have to act forward just like the game. But what you see is um, it's a... Um, 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 uh, they uh, much more reputations. So, <laughs> directly a new ball, and uh, again, three against two, and we tr uh, try to act forward to play between the lines. Um, so if we talk about simplify of football, uh, the end of the session will be a big scrimmage. Before that, we want to do a big uh, positional game, which with the same actions we want to uh, we want to have in the game and we have we want to have in the big scrimmage at the end. But before that, if we simplify it more, um, we then you got a question. Do you want to have it in the context of the game or out of the context? And if you bring it out of the context, we believe it gives an extra, extra dimension. Uh, you can play for profit at the edge of the, uh, the chaos. Um, a, big, a big challenge. So... Um, if we simplify it more, we want some general actions. Um, so we try to search for the connections. We try to uh, search exercises who are related to uh, the exercises after that. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you some um in, in the next video
So I think it's uh, an exercise everybody will know. But the goal of it the, uh, is we want again the three players, we want again between the lines and the strikers, okay, they love to score. So in this exercise also the, the strikers can score. But it's, it's, an exercise, uh, it's an exercise everybody will know. It's more about, okay, if we want to build up with three, if we want them to force um, uh, them to act forward and play between the lines, this will be an exercise at the start of the session, not at the start, but at the se second part of the session, who will, be, uh, who will fit and which we chose for. Again, the three. So it will be not about which exercise we do. It's all about why we do that exercises. So make the connection between the game, the way of playing, the structure, the principles, etc., and try to bring that to integrate it in the sessions and, and start that, the, that sessions with your preparation in your head at the end and before, before. So, also, this uh, is an uh, exercise we did before uh, that game. And on the moment that action was gone, again, two situations start again. So, you again, you have three against two on both sides and the defenders who are with two defenders, they can score on the small-sided goals. Um, if you see a little bit back. So you see on the background, you see another exercise. So we try to customize this. So our um, uh, strikers uh, are on that moment uh, working uh, with the, the, the big goals and our uh, defenders are trying to pass between the lines and our midfielders are, um, are, are working with um, making some runs behind uh, the opponent in the back. So again, new situation. So in this this exercise uh, you saw in the game uh, the pause to the striker who dropped back to midfielder and we got a new situation that's a situation we talk a lot about. So use the strikers to get a midfielder free into the midfield. Okay, um, so that makes, I believe uh, a session will be uh, four parts. The last part is the big scrimmage. The part before is the big positional game or a scrimmage with some typical rules or whatever to bring the goal of the sessions up. The, the game before is a, some uh, chaos session, um, chaos exercise. Um, and, 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 the, and the game before, of uh, the exercise before, we will start with. So we believe in small positional games at the start of the session, but we're searching for the connection with the other um, uh, 
um, goals of the session with the, uh, with the other goals of the exercise. So in this game, four against two, and they try to reach the other side. So you see again, four against two, but again, we try to force the opponent in choices, but uh, we try to act forward and reach the other side. So in this, it didn't work. And in this case, now it works. And you bring him to the other side. What we try to do is make it a, um, a play for profit. So we see on the other side, the orange team against the, the black team. And on this side, the black team against the orange team. So after a small time, um, we see, okay, which teams um, could reach the other side the most. And we have a score and uh, the other team has to do some push-ups or whatever. So we keep the score uh, in. Um, Andre. Peter, some questions? Yeah, but before I go to the last part, maybe we can yeah. do the last part because that's not that uh, long. And okay. uh, after that, the questions, or do, do you want to do between? No, it's okay. It's okay. You can go to the last part because we have here some interesting uh, questions that okay. probably will add value to, to what, you're, what, you're telling, what you're telling us. Okay, um, so in our philosophy, in our, our um, uh, way of working, we believe and we do a lot of workshop with the coaches, with the national coaches, we're full-time, so that's easily, um, to know yourself to the max. So um, the better you know yourself, the better you can help others, in this case, uh, uh, develop players. So that's a, that's a strong part of us, I think. Um, um, and I'm working uh, now one year, but um, all the time they tell me uh, um, to develop myself every time again and again. And, and, and they bring a lot of courses into uh, our uh, uh, association to uh, improve uh, ourselves. If we want to, if we work, we want to create a safe learning environment. Very important to, um, to uh, let the players um, develop their selves. Um, so we stimulate self-regulation uh, to create some mutual uh, dependence. Um, and, we, and, we, and we believe in a lot of positivity, a lot of honesty, clarity, just tell, tell them if it's good, but also tell them if, if it's not good. They, um, um, uh, at the end, they will um, um, uh, make that uh, happy the most, I think, for them. And, and we try to make it a lot of uh, customized uh, as much as possible. So... Um, at the end, and I think that's, that's one part of me, I think you, you have to have love for your players. Give them a lot of attention. Um, try to find out who they, they are. Who is, who is the, the, the human being behind that player? Um, how, how is he reacting on situations? And, um, and, and again, then you have to know how you, how you react in a situation by yourself. So that connection is very important. So if you love your players, you have to know how you act in different and difficult uh, kind of situations. And then you give them a lot of it, attention, a lot of energy and a lot of uh, help to develop their selves. Uh, and that's, that's what we believe and where, uh, what I also believe. So, to end up, um, we also uh, call, call ourselves the Lions. So, you see the Dutch team, 
you see some lions and a message of, of me is uh, surround yourselves with those on the same mission and um, so if you want to be the best soccer player surround yourself with a lot of uh, special specialism coaches and a lot of uh, very good coaches um, it will help you to uh, be a better uh, football coach football trainer coach uh, thank you for listening and I hope a lot of questions will uh, will come thank you very much Peter thank you for your uh, brilliant presentation okay um, so we have here um, a lot of questions um, let me just uh, see here all uh okay so so we will start from from the the beginning because some some questions came a little bit uh, a little bit later in the in the presentation we have here joan joan is asking after the mechanical orange from rinus mitchell in 74 uh what do you think that will be possible to have or do you think that will be possible to have a much talented team looking to the young Dutch players uh, that, are, that you have in the in the youth teams right now. I I don't get that question. I so, don't see that. So João is asking you after the the, yes. the mechanical orange that uh, that was uh, with Rinus Michel uh, in seventy four and seventy eight. Yeah. Um, do you think that uh, a talented uh, a talented team such as this that one? Uh, you will have in the next years ah, for, yeah. for Holland. Yeah, yeah. I cannot predict, but um, yeah, I, I can give some examples. We, uh, with our U17, we um, we won the European uh, Championships and uh, we uh, go to the World Cup with the U18s because that was one year later and um, they reached the semi-finals. Um, with my U15s, we uh, got a very talented uh, team. So it's all about the wave, I think. Uh, some uh, teams are very talented and some teams a little bit uh, less. But uh, I believe we always, we always have very talented uh, players. Um, and um, if we can, the, the Dutch team right now, Wijnaldum is not that old and uh, we got um, um, Depay who's going to be a better and better player but uh, Frenkie de Jong and Matthijs de Ligt are top level right now and they are only 20. So I think we got a pretty good team right now if they can um, develop uh, more international at their clubs and yeah. I believe uh, if it's if we're a little bit a little bit of lucky, we can reach uh, uh, yeah a good level with uh, with that team. Okay, Peter. Now uh, uh, a question a little more technical. Um, here, uh, Ricardo is asking about uh, the Dutch training uh, is well known by his technical development, uh, and Johan Cruyff said that football is. Uh, is a game played with the, with the head, uh, and the feet are just there to help. Uh, and he asks you your opinion about that. And uh, should we set up our development in the technical ability or in the decision making? Um, yeah, that's that's a, that's, that's a difficult question. Um, um, and and, and I, be, I believe every coach will is, is is strong by his vision. So um, we got some Dutch coaches, um, Kruijf, Meulenstein, um, and more, who are uh, believe in development of the technical abilities. And we got a lot of coaches who are tactical, uh, very strong, uh, um, educated. So um, I, I think it depends on the coach. My vision will be. Um, to uh, improve the players in de decision making because I believe uh, in a game of 90 95 minutes uh, they only have uh, have the ball I think uh, 30 times 20 or 30 times so um, all the 
other time they are running around, they make decisions by making runs, by seeing how is the opponent acting, how can I make a run so I can force him into a choice, etc. So, and I believe if you uh, develop players from young age on a good level, so our top academies uh, starts at U7, U8, I think that's too early, but it is. Uh, on this moment, um, um, that technical abilities will improve uh, always. So we have we have to uh, create um, um, better players players with decision making. So that's also what I try to show is uh, don't start that session. We got. Um, you have to have reasons to simplify football. So the best practice will be 11 v 11, but you have to um, um, uh, a reason to simplify it. So if you want to uh, give that pass between the line, you simplify it because otherwise it's one or two times in that session. And that's not um, uh, much uh, enough. So you want to do simple exercises when in, in every 10 seconds, they try to uh, pass it between the lines, pass it between the lines, as I showed. So I believe in a, find a reason to simplify it. And if you want to train the technical abilities, you have to simplify it a lot, maybe everybody a ball, uh, and uh, train the technical abilities. But... My vision is also that technical abilities will train in small-sided games with a lot of chaos, with a lot of um, uh, decision-making. They will improve their technical abilities uh, for sure. Okay, thank you, Peter. I think was uh, I think was uh, was really good explanation about it. Um, we have here a different question from Tadeo. Tadeo is asking about. Um, um, what is the, the, the implemented methodology that um, you have to, to make sure that the, the players have the maximum known about the game and if there's um, a difference between them, between the different age groups of the national team? Um, now, up front, uh, the players are from, uh, from the clubs. so. We we got we have a very short term um, when they have when we're gonna play international matches. For example, we had a tournament in Spain. We only had three uh, sessions, and then we have to play. Uh, have to play. So in very short term, we have to um, give them a structure and integrate some principles. Um, um, so the the really de developing of that players are is 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 at the clubs, um, but uh, we got um, uh, a structure of playing, a way of playing from a team organization one four three three, um, and we try to uh, integrate some principles and we try to keep that as simple as possible. Um, and besides that, we tried to, and I think that will answer the questions a little bit, uh, the question a little bit, and we try to customize that. So uh, you saw my left midfielder is dropping uh, back to the last line. That are his qualities. And our left D, who is uh, got a lot of energy to go uh, up the pitch and, and drop back again, etc. cetera. Um, but don't have that uh, technical abilities and also not the tactical abilities to play with, uh, with time and space to force the opponent in choices. So in that structure, we try to customize uh, the quality of the players um, to uh, bring them in their strength of their uh, qualities. And um, I think that's a part of the answer of the question. Um, or do I get it uh, um, fully? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the the, 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 okay. the main message is that uh, players come from the the clubs, and and in their clubs they have to to get that kind of information to to make sure yeah. that when they go to the national team they they can uh, they can play well and then they can they can do whatever you you ask them to do because yeah. that's the the job of the clubs to to yeah but 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 a build big, that type big, of player. Yeah, but big thing in Holland is uh, we try to customize it for every player. So um, I, I ask for, for example, but about all the big clubs, it's not about winning the championship U15, but you see my national U15 players are playing U16, U17. So um, that makes it's not about the championship in that year. It's about the development of that player in a kind of period so if he's ready uh, if he's good enough he's old enough to play uh, older ages so that means um, um, a lot of youth players um, uh, I think Matthijs de Ligt when he was U17 he already played U19 so when he was U18 he, he can uh, play for the second team of Ajax, and when he's uh, doing that great, he will, as uh, 18 years old of U18 player, I think he played for the first team. So that's um, because if he's ready, he's going to the um, the older age group. And I yeah. think that's a big philosophy of Holland. It's not about the champion. Of course, Ajax want to be the champion of U15. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing will be the player in the first team, and they got a lot of good players, uh, and 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 a few in the in the in the first team. So, I think that's that that will be uh, uh, a, a better answer also for that question. Okay, uh, we have here a question from Thomas. Uh, he's asking uh, if you have a specific game model uh, for the 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 U15 uh, or. Um, you can kind of make a game model of your own with some specifications from the Dutch National Association. Um, now, to be, to be honest, we, we have uh, some core values and those are um, uh, for every age. At the end of, if everybody, uh, if our player uh, plays for each team, he, uh, uh, he will know every core value between his uh, going to the first team of the national of the Dutch national team. So at U15 we got three core values. I told you about. And next year the next one will uh, will come uh, to that. Um, so th that's 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 philosophy. That's where I have to work with. Um, every week we uh, discuss about the way of playing with all the national coaches. So that means. Um, we almost play on the same way with the same teams, but not exactly. It also depends of the individual qualities of the players. It also depends of the, the qualities of your team. It also depends on you, you also, uh, always have some typical accents of the coach of typical accents of some players you want to integrate so um there's it's it's almost the same but it also depends on the coach and of the players okay we have here a question from from carlos carlos um is is asking this uh when we talk about selecting uh, u15 players from all over the country you need to select select the best ones uh, between 13 and 15 years old, there is the peak height velocity for boys, leading to quite different maturational stages. Um, usually, coaches and scouts prefer players with high competitive, competitive uh, readiness, um, but not necessarily the most talented ones. Uh, how does your coaching staff differentiate the players selected for the main U15 uh, from those who will integrate the future U15 team? Yeah, that's interesting, and that's the reason why we don't play uh, U14s international games. And um, at the end of the U15, so we start later with international games, but still, you have that um, uh, 
biological age for some players who are very talented, but much younger than other players. Um, to be honest, my selection for, uh, for Spain will be the players which we think we're going to win those games and those tournaments. Because if you only take the most talented ones and, um, and we're not physically ready to play that games, we, 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 it's not equal. So um, you also take the best players on that moment, but we try to get, uh, bring that together. So the most talented, but also the players who are also uh, already physical. So I also got one player who is very talented, but bio biological, I think he's 13 on this moment, maybe, maybe the start of 13. So he did everything till that tournament. And on that moment, he was injury. But otherwise, I told him, you're not going with me to Spain. But from that moment, he will be uh, integrated to the team of the futures because he's... He's not ready, physical, not ready mentally to play those international games to Spain uh, against Spain or Belgium or Czech who are very physical. So um, uh, difficult choices. And um, if we hesitate about two players, we take the most talented one. And, 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 um, and I think that's how it works on this moment. You still want to win those games, so you cannot choose only the the future ones. Okay, I think was the uh, I think Carlos uh, is um, is a really was a really good answer. So Carlos will give will give it a go, Carlos. Okay, uh, we'll we'll pass to the next question. Um, so uh, Jose Augusto is, is asking. Um, uh, about about in the defensive organization, um, what is the philosophy? Uh, it's to to speculate or provoke uh, the the, um, the the opponent to make their own uh, mistake in the decisions. So what what he's asking is uh, uh, in your um, defensive organization, uh, what you do is um, you wait until the the moment that the opponent make the decisions and expect them to to make mistakes with their decisions is that what you what you're doing or you uh you you play in the or defensive organization a little more active than than this yes yeah, so, uh, one of the core values is to, that we want to do, dominate the games so that gives the answers um, i think you can dominate a game uh, also with dropping a little bit back, but uh, we try to uh, give high pressure and we try to uh, force them into faults um, by giving high pressure. And um, I, I, I choose for an offensive, uh, offensive um, uh, session, I showed you, but um, it could be also defensively. So um, in this part, in this question will be uh, high pressure. Uh, we uh, want to be the bars on the pitch, um, but uh, it also, again, depends a little bit of the coach, uh, depends a, lot of, a little bit about the qualities in the team, uh, the qualities of the individual player. And um, in all the games, you got moments of high pressures, pressure, we want that. But I think we have to learn our players also uh, to teach them to drop back in some difficult situations. So uh, we try to give high pressure, but sometimes uh, um, um, uh, not, not in every uh, situation. Okay. Um, we have here um, Sander. Um, he's asking if there was some change of, of the, the way the way that uh, Holland was seeing the, the youth football and the, the progress of football um, after um, you missed some qualifications. I think you started, uh, you started talking about it uh, when, you, when you missed the, the European Championship. Um, those, uh, those years were the ones that, that you, as a, uh, the National Association, decided 
to change something or you kept doing the same things but with uh, a little a little differences you know in that moment i was not uh, not working at uh, for the for the dutch uh, association i was working for finan but yeah. but um um yeah i i believe we we are strong in what we do and in in those kind of situations you always think hey what's going to happen uh, um uh, but about to be honest i i think nobody was panicking uh, we were full full of confidence and uh, we thought okay the next the next wave that i explained like that will come and we believe in that we knew which players were coming uh, in the youth teams so um, sometimes you're a little bit hesitating about hey we're a small country and can we um, um, uh, face uh, a country of uh, Spain and German because they are much much bigger and more people etc um, but but uh, we, we kept uh, faith and um, I think we're strong in who we are and what we do and um, uh, we got a strong country uh, we uh, I started uh, with that with a good uh, infra structure and, um, and and we're smart people and um, we got a strong uh, democracy, so I think we um, we develop players uh, of a big uh, international level uh, always. So we kept faith, I think. Okay. Uh, okay, we have uh, here a good question from Adam, and Adam is saying. Uh, with Holland being a small country, what do you think has been the key for creating so many talented players and having so much success? He's saying that because he lives in Northern Ireland and uh, he's saying that they are also a small country, but they do not have as many talented players as Holland have. So what do you think that, that is the, the, dif the main difference between, between this? I think that's... Uh... I talked about uh, the, uh, the 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 past uh, one and a half hour. A strong people with a strong vision, a good structure. Uh, also in the youth academies, a strong uh, vision of, of uh, uh, developing uh, uh, players. We um, 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 we got a strong association. Uh, so you see, uh, for example, in America, there's not one association but uh, th that's not well organized uh, the 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 organization uh, the competition structure and in holland there's there's one big strong uh, association who is working together with the clubs to um, and we we all together have one goal to develop um, the best players uh, we got and 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 that cooperation uh, i think that's very strong and together I started with is we're living in a strong country with innovative people with with a strong um, uh, vision. So that all together, I think it makes us strong. OK, let, let me ask a question from myself to you. Uh, uh, continuing with what Adam is saying here, um, do you, I don't know if there's still there's still uh, as much as street football or the kids players uh, as they they needed to to in the streets and uh, if they um, play different kind of sports because that is uh, really important because of their own coordination and at the same time if they do different different types of movements with different types of balls and different types of contacts it will be really really important for them and for their develop development physically technically and psychologically um, do you think that in Holland, um, the the way that uh, that the kids are playing in the streets and they are able to do that, I don't know if nowadays it's it's the same, but here in Portugal we have that difficulty because um, the players right now they only play football in their own academies in their own clubs. They doesn't play they don't play football in any any other any other time of their their day or their week. They only play football in a football field, uh, and we know because. Uh, uh, 
a lot of a lot of the the the, the participants that are here today with us uh, they work in uh, a lot of clubs and the uh, NB clubs as well and we know that that is important for for every everyone and every player and every athlete to to start doing by themselves to start playing with big guys small guys uh, smarter guys faster guys so different contexts different uh, different um, uh, situations uh, will build a better player a better athlete do you think that probably that's the difference of from Holland from for instance, what Adam was saying from Northern Ireland uh, uh, players. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. But um, the, the problem from Portugal, uh, we we have in Holland also. So we see um, a lot of social media and computer. And um, uh, when I grew up, I go outside and, and play soccer on, 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 on little pitches. But uh, that problem is still in Holland. So... You see, on uh, very young ages, uh, players uh, go to uh, professional uh, football uh, organizations, football academies, and uh, with the best coaches, with the best players, they can develop. And you see uh, the gap between the amateur level and um, the, the, the professional youth academies are, are growing bigger. So it's going to be very hard right now if you're in an amateur level and you don't play on the streets, what you told about, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's not going to work. So we're very crowded in, in, in the big cities and uh, there's not a lot of money in those families. And you see in the big cities, where there's not much money for computers and, and uh, cell phones, etc. the kids go out and they're going to play. So that's, uh, also a difference I think in Northern Ireland is in those big cities there's a lot of uh, playing on the streets still in this um, uh, uh, in this period so um, I think in some parts of Holland we got a problem also uh, players are not uh, playing on the streets anymore so if you don't play on a professional soccer uh, academy uh, you got a problem, but in the big cities, um, especially uh, kids uh, who are not that financially or with uh, families who made other choices, they just tell the kids go outside and go play, and um, yeah, they they uh, develop themselves on the streets, and uh, I believe in that. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Thank you, Peter, for uh, for uh, for answer answer me and Adam as well. Um, so we have here um, a question from Matthias. Matthias is is uh, asking it. Um, you worked for different. Uh, he's saying BVOs. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, um, that uh, pro soccer academies. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, in in Netherlands, and now for the the National uh, Dutch Association, uh, uh, where have you your ideas changed? Uh, what would you do differently if you come back to work in a youth academy? Um, no, I'm I'm searching for the best version of myself. So I I'm uh, developing by myself uh, every day. So I would. Um, uh, I'm strong in my vision and strong uh, in who I am. So if you uh, asked me a few years ago, I told you uh, I'm one of the best uh, coaches there is. It isn't, but I believe it. So I just show that to the world. Um, but uh, a few years later right now, and I'm, I'm looking to, me, to myself uh, backwards. Uh, then you see, hey, I improved a lot the last years. And so I believe in uh, strong courses. I uh, also got um, a head of Academy Pro right now. That uh, helped me a lot when I was working for Fine Art. I, I uh, graduated uh, um, that uh, diploma. Um, my UEFA A helped me a lot at that period, around uh, 2008. A lot of courses. Uh, and 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 self regulation so um, um uh, today is a difficult 
part for me because my English is not that good, but it's a big chance for me. And I, I'm very happy uh, with the chance to show myself, to show our, our vision. Um, and it helps me to uh, develop myself. So to that question, uh, at an, a national um, uh, as, uh, association I'm working uh, for right now, um, it's, it's a perfect surroundings to uh, develop myself, but uh, uh, um, um, a totally other function. So I can develop myself uh, in uh, other situations, in other ways, etc. cetera. Um, in my final period, I had also a totally other function. So I was not a coach by myself, but I was the coordinator. So I had to uh, improve my coaches. I had to improve the philosophy of the club, the vision of the club. And that helped me also a lot. I'm a teacher right now of... Uh, of, um, of UEFA A, that brings me a lot and improve myself uh, also to a better football coach, but also to a better uh, human being. So I believe in every function you do, it helps you to bring you a better, uh, to be a better human being, better football coach. Um, the, the only way I want to reach my goal and my goal will be prof coaching in a professional uh, football. So um, I have to uh, think about my next step and uh, I want to go to the older ages. Uh, maybe I want to go back to, to a club. Um, it's going to be interesting. Okay, Peter, uh, we have here the, the final, final questions. Uh, Ismael is asking, um, can, can you, can Peter explain how, uh, how he does a week of training in the different days? I know that uh, we know that you work in the National Association and you have a few days, a few days to work with, uh, with, with, your, with your athletes. But uh, even in those few days, what do you prioritize or what are your priorities? Yeah, now, for example, um, to Spain, we got three days. So we choose for, and we also have to fly uh, to have a flight to Spain. So we choose for, uh, to start on a session on Monday. And I thought you saw some uh, parts of that uh, session. And it's all about the offensive way of playing. The second uh, session in Spain was also the offensive way of playing. Uh, on, on Wednesday, the third session was about uh, defensive playing, uh, only one session. Uh, we try to integrate that as fast as possible, but uh, the general part, so not um, uh, too deep into uh, those uh, functions, but uh, keep it easily for those players. And what we did on Thursday was um, we have to play the match on, I think, four o'clock. So we had uh, at 10 o'clock uh, uh, some activation session. And in that activation session, we integrate the set pieces. So that makes uh, also the set pieces. We try to uh, integrate uh, in, a, in our way of playing. So two days of offensive play, one day of defensive play. The transition we always integrate. So if we do offensive play, we also do uh, transition. And we do defensive play, we also uh, do transition on it. And, um, and the activation session, uh, small parts of the set pieces. And then we have to start. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your, uh, your answer, Peter. So uh, we have here, uh, I think, will be the final question because we don't have yeah, any questions uh, out anymore out. in the shot. Um, so we have here Pedro is asking that uh, he always had the idea that Dutch football was uh, based uh, a lot in the 1v1, uh, 1v1 uh, learning and the 1v1 um, training from the youth, the youth uh, uh, the youth ages uh, doesn't 
doesn't it happen so much? Um, what what do you think about this? Um, yeah, I was working only from U 15s or uh, older, so um, I got a big vision on on that part of uh, de de developing and education. Uh, so if every I'm always searching for reasons to simplify uh, football to get interesting uh, exercises with uh, a good dimension in it with a lot of energy with a lot of gayas with with uh, small sided games um, but if you go younger to and that's the question to maybe you some you eight. Uh, then you, um, the technical part of the education is the most uh, uh, interesting part. So I think on that age, don't play the big scrimmages, don't play from a, a, a typical kind of team organization, but um, bring them in choices. So uh, only with one ball, one player, and some dribbling, I believe you can better. Uh, force them into choices. So play two against one, three against two, two against one plus one from the back, etc. Small-sided games with a lot of technically uh, um, uh, uh, technically uh, stuff, but also decision making for those players. Uh, am I gonna make an action or um, am I gonna pass? And then what moment I'm gonna pass? And just uh, bring them uh, in those situations. I believe in that kind of education on the younger, younger ages. Okay, I don't know if everyone have uh, a last question. Uh, não sei se mais alguém tem alguma alguma última questão. Uh, fazemos aqui um compasso de espera para perceber se mais alguém quer colocar alguma questão ou não. Uh, we'll wait here a little bit for. Uh, Someone that would love to to do a, a last question because we are almost in the end of uh, of our lecture. Um, while we are waiting, uh, let me uh, address a personal end for elite performance football. Um, our our proud and pride uh, of having here Peter with us. Um, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for uh, for um, for uh, sharing with us all your expertise. Uh, all your know know how, uh, and we will uh, end here this this session. Um, better coaches, um, better human beings. Okay, because the the message that you that you that you passed was pretty clear. We need to be better human beings, and we need to love our our athletes for us to be uh, better better coaches. Uh, so this uh, this was. Uh, uh, the way that we have to to thank you, Peter. Okay, and uh, thank you. Thank you. we have here a last question from Pedro, and we will finish with this one. Um, what is the reason? Uh, the reason of uh, Dutch football uh, doesn't bet on uh, futsal uh, uh, because, as in Brazilian football, uh, this is the way that they develop the most technical uh, parts of their of their football. Yeah, yeah, good question. Yeah, the, the, okay, uh, the, the, the football is sports uh, number one in Holland. So a lot, a lot of um, um, uh, boys, but in, in this moment also girls are uh, playing for clubs and, and, and we are well structured so everybody can play. My son is uh, almost two and uh, he's already uh, signed in for a club. So uh, everybody can play soccer and uh, the futsal is not that popular. So um, almost nobody's playing futsal. And um, I believe uh, what Andre said, it's a very interesting uh, part to uh, develop your skills uh, to play indoor, uh, especially in, 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 in several ages. But um, yeah, we don't do that. So uh, it, it's a big chance, I think, to uh, to uh, be a better soccer country. country. Um, um, but it's it's not happening on this moment. So yes, it is what it is. 
yeah <laughs> it's different kind of uh, philosophies and methodologies yeah. so but both both really big countries and uh, with a, a very rich history in uh, in football uh so uh everyone is is uh is um saying thank you to you peter um i think it was a really really good really good lecture uh thank you for your effort thank you for uh for what you've done here with us and uh all the best for you and we have as i told you a lot of professional football coaches here in the lecture uh seeing you uh from biggest clubs in portugal uh and different kinds of clubs in portugal different areas of the country different areas from the world uh so uh it was it was uh we were very lucky to have you uh so thank you very much again in my name in name of uh, elite performance football okay thank you yeah, stay, stay safe and uh we'll keep yeah. talking thank you for having me and uh nice to meet everyone and uh let's stay in contact thank you bye bye okay, peter thank you bye bye boa tarde a todos obrigado